Voice activation required. Thor. Access denied. Uh, Thor, son of Odin. Access denied. Strongest Avenger. Access denied. Voice activation required. Banner. Welcome, Strongest Avenger. Oh, what? Katrina Porter! Oh, a Serene! Welcome to Split Happens, everyone. Welcome, everybody. Each episode, Katrina and I talk about a movie that both of us love, but with a twist. Very it's a twist. It's a twist. <laughs> Only one of us gets to say anything good about it. They're the pro of the episode, and the other person is the con, and they have to shit all over it. We have three rules we must follow. Number one. Whoever claims pro first on a movie we haven't covered yet gets it. For now. That one. Stay tuned. Yeah, we might be changing that one soon. Because we can grow as people. Number two, the con only has to attack during the synopsis. And number three. Lucky you. What's that? Lucky you. (laughs) You know, shit. Speaking of which. I've got my hand by the red button. Oh, god damn it. Number three. Speaking of which. During that synopsis, the con can't say anything nice about the movie at all. Not even a little bit. Mm -mm. Because if they do, there is a penalty, which is the offender has to say something nice about the movie that they hate the most. Mine is the remake of Clash of the Titans. Mine is the movie Hannibal. You all know how I feel about it. It's... Facts. You don't have to go in. Awful. Yeah, it's so awful. You'll know that the rule has been broken because... The pro will be smashing that big red button. (laughs) And then you'll hear this sound. I'm in a glass case of emotion. Today, I am the pro. Mm. And I'm so happy. And you are so screwed. Tell the people what you are. What are you going to do to this movie? Okay, well, here's what I'm going to try to do. Uh I'm going to reduce this movie to a rubble. Like I am a confusingly hot Kate Blanchett. And the movie is Asgard. So we're obviously doing Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, we are. Oh. Are you confused by Kate, why Kate Blanchett's hot? Because she's just, she's a stone cold fox. She is. She gives me confusing feelings. Oh, it's okay. You don't have to be confused about it. Just go with it. She's fucking hot. She this. is. She is. But Goodness I, gracious. I can say that right now. I know. You know, there. <laughs> we're going to really step outside of the norm here and, and, uh, just objectify people through this entire podcast. Because this movie is chock full of hotties. I will most likely be reserving the majority of my objectifying to Kate Blanchett and Taika Waititi. What about the Valkyrie? Oh, Tessa Thompson? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's gorge. Mm-hmm. She's a little intense for me. And that's with Kate Blanchett as a villain in this movie. Oh, I dig it. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to add another uh, label to what type of podcast this is. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my disclaimer. Oh, yeah. We want everyone to listen to this podcast, uh, no matter what movies that you're into. I'm assuming that if people um, are listening to an episode about Thor Ragnarok, that means that they're into the comics or they're into the movies and all, you know. So I'm just going to tell you straight up. <laughs> I'm going to pronounce everyone's name wrong. Yes. And I'm not going to say anything about the comics. Yes. So I apologize now yeah. for all of those things. See, I, I don't know how I gave this. I don't know what I traded for this. But, it, God, I hope it was good. Could it have been, um, you know, Dark Man? Oh. It, I think it was that. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like I'm going to have a walk in the park with that one. I, 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 that park is going to be easier to walk through than, than this park. This park is difficult. Hey, Anna Serene. Yeah. You want to know a little bit about this movie? Can I give a disclaimer first? Sure. I wasn't going to. (laughs) I was going to say something about like, that I, I feel like I've just been sounding really nasally and scratchy lately. I think that's maybe just how I sound. (laughs) And I, I haven't quite made peace with that. But I want to share. It's okay. 
Okay. Uh, you sound like an angel. Well, thanks. Yeah, I definitely want to hear some info about this. Okay. The budget for this movie was $180 million. The uh, U.S. box office was $854 million. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. God, we just did Independence Day and that was, that. that's about where it was then. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a different time. Of Crazy, but... right? Yeah. Oh, I th it should, obviously we're doing Thor Ragnarok, came out in 2017. Mm-hmm. The other movies, I'm not going to go through top grossing movies, any of that, because when I tell you two other movies that came out that year, you're going to know uh, what the top grossing movies were. Mm. So this one, obviously. Yeah. Spider-Man Homecoming. Ooh. And uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Oh. So it's the first time three Marvel movies came out in one year. That makes me so happy. I know. Mm. Kenneth Branagh. Yes. Directed the first Thor. Yes. Yes. He passed on doing this one because he was doing um, Murder on the Orient Express. Oh. Which didn't, I, I, I didn't look it up, but I don't think it made no $854 million. No. And I, I, re I really love the original. Yeah. Um, I think Ingrid Berman won an Oscar for it. Yeah. So it ended up being directed by Taika Waititi. This is the first movie that Taika Waititi directed that he didn't write the screenplay for. Who wrote it? I um, thought he did. Eric Pearson? That's not a real person. So when Taika Waititi wrote this... <laughs> <laughs> That's all I had. <laughs> he didn't, though. And I thought he did also, but I think part of it is because you've heard him talk so much about what he wanted certain characters to do and... And how funny it is. And that's, yeah. you know, that's sort of one of his trademarks. You think he wrote it, but he didn't. Again, I apologize for pronouncing almost everyone's name wrong. Sounds uh, like you just don't care. No, I do. I just am bad at it. Do you know the hammer's name? Mjernir? 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 Say it again. <laughs> Mjernir. <laughs> you know what you sound like? But You sound like you're saying that. It, like in a traveling car. Mirror. <laughs> Mirror near. Is that right? Mirror near? Sure. <laughs> it's close enough. There's no fucking way I'm going to say that correctly. Anything you want to say before we get started? Yes. Okay. Before we get going, I am going to hate attacking this one. Oh, I had to watch it twice because I, I really, really struggled the first time through to get anything and i i almost threw in the towel on this one i really oh. did i did but um here's what i'm gonna do i am going to try and prove that this movie's greatest strength that being how incredibly funny it is is also its greatest weakness i appreciate you letting the people know that your takes are going to suck right out of the gate you know i actually think that this one is kind of legit i think that they're me like yeah that bitch has a point. I don't think anyone's going to say that. Do you mind if I have a cough drop real quick before we get started? That's I... not a cough drop. That's a butterscotch. I'm going to chew my cough drop. I'm going to drink my wine. Okay. And I'm going to fucking slay this. Play that goddamn song. Bring it, Bane. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Let the games begin. The movie starts off with Thor captured. This movie is funny straight out of the gate. Thor's just having a chitty chat with a skeleton. <laughs> What's funny is when I mentioned that I was going to say people's names wrong. Yeah. I have it wrong in my notes like right away because I've got um, <laughs> Surfer. Well, that's not his name. No. The big red guy. It's Surter. Surter is played by Clancy Brown. Hell yeah, he is. I know who that is. That's... um. Mr. Krabs they on can't SpongeBob see SquarePants. They can't see that. Yeah, cause. They can't Mr. see Krabs. that. <laughs> this scene is so funny. So Surter's basically t talking to Thor about Ragnarok and... First, Thor fell, f like, falls from a chain around him that definitely should have broken his back. And I know he's a god, so obviously that wouldn't kill him. But seeing it made me think of Gwen Stacy's death and The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And I haven't quite gotten over that yet. Okay, this scene is really funny. Thor keeps turning around while Surtur's <laughs> trying to explain Ragnarok, and Thor's like, Hang on. I mean, 
back around shortly. Do I really feel like we were connecting there? Okay, so Ragnarok, tell me about that. Walk me through it. It is very funny. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Surtur is way stronger than Thor. It's true. Yeah, but he's, Thor is a clever clause. He's capable of triggering Ragnarok upon Asgard, mm -hmm. but Thor is able to like beat him fairly easily, which seems unlikely except that Surtur explains that his crown needs to be reunited with the Eternal Flame for him to be at full strength, right? Mm -hmm. The problem is that the humor and the silliness of Thor in the scene is a distraction from actually hearing that and understanding that. I, I don't think so. You just I, said it. I think it is. I think with his interrupting, it could actually be hard to follow that Surtur's actually weakened in this moment. What's confusing? Ragnarok's been triggered. That's a bad. Not yet. Well, it's it's getting ready to be. Why, why hasn't it yet? Because of the comics. <laughs> it hasn't yet because he's weakened at the moment because he needs his his crown to be reunited with the eternal flame. He explains all this. It's just the point is that he's too busy cracking wise and it's distracting you because all you're thinking about is him going, hold on, I'll make my way around. I thought we were really connecting here and you're not listening to what Surtur is saying and he is he is building up what will it be a really important part at the end. Thor kills a bunch of zombies with Mjolnir. <laughs> the, ham the, the hammer thingy. And then takes Surtur's head and heads home. Yeah. The opening song is Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin. Yeah. One of the few movies that Led Zeppelin lent music to in general. Mm -hmm. But one of the very, 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 very few movies that Led Zeppelin lent music to that was not a Cameron Crowe film. In Almost Famous. Yeah. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. School of Rock. Mm. Those all had Led Zeppelin songs. Those are all Cameron Crowe. Fascinating. I wonder mm -hmm. if he, he was with Rolling Stones. Uh, maybe. I No, I know they're stingy about it. I remember uh, with uh, Wayne's World. That was the thing is he's in the guitar store and he starts to play Stairway to Heaven. They're like, no, you can't play that. And they had to, they had to take that out because they were like, no, you can't use our song. Mm -hmm. Thor lands on Asgard and immediately makes a mess of things. Carl Urban, a.k.a. Scourge, is... Uh, talking to some hotties. A.K.A. the butcher from The Boys. Right. Oh, so good. If you have not watched The Boys, I'm not sure what you're into, but it's amazing. I'm so glad you started watching it. I love it. it. Oh, I love it. I love it. So in that scene, uh, Scourge is using a shake weight. <laughs> that is Taika Waititi's. He bought it for uh, when he was doing Green Lantern. What? I know. He was like, he was in Green Lantern, and so... He, it was like a... He bought it as like to actually use like non-ironically? Correct. Oh my. Yeah. Tyka. So that's actually his shake weight. Thor learns that Heimdall is on the outs, to which I say, boo. <sighs> yeah, this, this problem just wrote itself. Anytime that Idris Alba is not in every moment of a movie, he's, he's undervalued. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Glad, glad you agree with that. There's a million people in this movie. Yeah. And the movie's not called Heimdall, Ragnarok. It's Thor. Thor's walking through Asgard and he sees uh, a play, which is so freaking funny. And the play is about Thor and Loki and how Loki saves everything. And yeah. Ma Matt Damon plays Loki, <laughs> which is so funny. Luke Hemsworth, Chris's brother, plays Thor. He's You didn't get into Westworld? I got. I watched the first season. Okay, he's in the first season. He was in Westworld, and so was Anthony Hopkins, and so was Tessa Thompson. Right. Uh, did nobody question why the play was like gobbling Loki's knob? He's a trickster, and he can take on other forms. And went from like being super hated to beloved and worshipped just because all of a sudden, weirdly acting Odin says so. Come on, people, do better. I think when Odin says something, people listen to it. But every, all of a sudden, everything, they know that, that Loki can shapeshift. They know that he's a trickster and that all of a sudden, Odin is acting very strange. And all of a sudden, Loki's having statues, I mean, statues are being erected to Loki. And then this play. I think, I think people assume that Odin is grieving because Thor is gone. People do weird shit when they're grieving. Oh, not this again. <laughs> not this again. Um, Sam Neill plays... Odin. He is a Kiwi? 
maybe? He is. I believe. Yes. I follow him on Twitter. I do too. He's a delight. He is. And he was in uh, Jurassic Park movies with Jeff Goldblum. <gasps> yes, he was. Yeah. Yes, he was. Ooh, circles, circular. Right. I like that most of his Twitter is just him talking about his farm animals. I know. <laughs> this play is hysterical. And if you were not the con, you would be saying that same thing. He's and like, he's like. Tell my story. Build a statue for me. We will build a big statue for you. With my helmet on. With the big bendy horns. I feel like this would, this play is like the origin story of like, if we were writing a play about our lives <laughs> and both of us would have. <laughs> I like how split happens. Right. And yeah. Katrina totally came up with this concept all on her own. Make sure that people know to rate us and review us five stars. <laughs> I will, sister. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thor clearly figures out that something is amok. Mm. Amok. 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 amok, amok, amok. amok. And he gets smear near. Smear. Smear near. And basically threatens to smash Odin's face. And that's when Loki presents himself because he's a trickster. He's like, here I am. Loki and Thor go to Earth to find Odin, and Loki has mm-hmm. lost him, which is problematic. Well, just putting him on Earth for that long was uh, probably detrimental, and that was beyond trickster. That's just, that's just murder. They get snatched up by Doctor Strange. Yeah, what a fucking waste of Benedict Cumberbatch this is. Well, He's in it for two seconds. Well, but that they, so before they destroyed the Doctor Strange set, Taika Waititi's like, whoop, hold up. And so it was kind of a clever way to use what had already been produced. Oh, he's a he's a thrifty hoe. Yeah. And also kind of get Doctor Strange more into the Marvel uh the Marvel fam. And at the end of Doctor Strange is the after credit scene is this scene. Taika Waititi wanted to showcase uh Chris Hemsworth his comedic talent which he thought oh, was shit. underutilized. No shit. What do you mean? I'm saying that it, it the comedic part of this is is heavy handed. I think it's clever because if you think about it, th- this movie is it has funny moment after funny moment, but it really is as far as Thor goes. Mm-hmm. It's like it's kind of a tragic. He doesn't have Jane anymore. He loses his eye. He loses Asgard. It's not like shit goes great for him. He loses his dad. Um, how did he say uh, that he died? How did who say who died? Odin. Oh. He did die, right? Yeah. Uh, how do we know that? Because he faded away. He could have just teleported or, or something. No, he went, Ugh. No, he didn't even do that. I think that's what I heard. He's like, remember something and then just sparkles. Just, no, he, he just went. glittered into the abyss. So we think there's no goodbyes. There's no like sad thing. He doesn't even explain anything because Taika Waititi and the writer of this were too busy cracking wise to explain, to have those meaningful moments that we should be able to have so that we can absorb the story going on. But nope, you got you to gotta save room for Chris Hemsworth to, to tell a joke. This isn't the English patient. <laughs> we, it is not. We don't need to wallow in sadness for every second of the movie. It's an excellent movie, though. It is an excellent movie. Very Funny? Sad. I think not. I mean, with the with the right attitude. I do not. I think this movie is the action is perfect. The humor is perfect. The character development is perfect. The, absolutely. Even because there's so much going on in this movie, like there is in every Marvel movie. Mm-hmm. It's not like you can delve super deep into any character. Can they, did, can they delve in at all? I mean, Scourge has barely has a character arc, and he's a pretty important part of this. Mm. I told you, this was hard. Did you want this movie to be five hours long? Yes. This is the first time either Thor or Loki have heard that they have an older sister. Yes. This is the first time yeah. you're hearing this. Odin, you know... Odin, he, that was a bad on him. He, he should have mentioned it. Well, it seems unlikely and also incredibly convenient. Well, if you created the goddess of whatever, murder or whatever, would you be telling everybody about it? He created, in, in this, he created 
Loki, and he's the trickster god. He's the god of mischief. and you know. There's a big difference between the god of mischief and the goddess of kill a lot. It sounds like a really awful Care Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that over there in the corner? Oh, that's kill a lot. Kill a lot. Stay away from her. Thor has a heart to heart with Pops about Ragnarok. Yeah. And that's when Thor learns that he's got a sister. She's kind of a bitch. And he exiled her because you can't. It's why? Because she uh, loves, she loved violence too much, and she was out of control. And he's like, "Got you, got to go." But you can't keep it, keep an evil bitch down, and she's back. Um, I'm sorry, X filed to where? Um, k- kill a lot, Bill. Is kill like, a lot, Bill. Is that like that place where they put the kids in an IKEA so that you can go shop? Yeah, without having to deal with kids. She she went she went bye bye, but she's back. Okay, they, and they she's just didn't pissed. explain it, so I mean, I just wouldn't know where. Oh my gosh. As I mentioned earlier, Hella is played by Kate Blanchett, mm-hmm. and she is wonderful. Odin tells Thor about Hella. Mm-hmm. Thor's a little confused, which I think he is a lot. Oh, we all are, so. Odin dies. Thor is pissed at Loki because mm-hmm. he clearly blames Loki for this. As he should. Yeah, uh, yeah, as he should. And then Kate Blanchett shows up. She didn't waste a second, did she? No, she looks equally snatched and terrifying. Yeah, she is too hot for a villain. I'm just going to say uh-uh. it. There, I said it. She look, She is too hot for a villain, and she looks nothing like Thor, and she just broke near, near. What an asshole. She accepted the role because her kids are like, yeah, you need to do this. It's going to help your career. So she's also a good mom. I'm sure she is a very good mom. She's also the first female... Marvel villain. Is that right? In the movies. I mean, I don't know about the comics, no, no, but... No, no, no. Right. Huh. I'll be damned. She breaks uh, the menorah, and because Loki is a dumbass, he calls... did you just call it the menorah? <laughs> Mirror. <laughs> oh, no. Great. Now I right. need to apologize. <laughs> to, to, to the Jewish population? Okay, the Mirnir. She breaks that, and you're correct. That wasn't very nice. Yeah, the CGI in this, especially with Hela's fight, and especially, especially with the Hulk fight later on in the movie, is not even close to the best CGI Marvel movies have to offer. It is not the best CGI. It is not. I, d- I, I, don't, know, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you I serious? Did, I didn't notice anything wrong with it. Really? No. You were easy to please. Because Loki is a dumbass, he calls for the portal to Asgard. Hela takes out Loki and Thor, and they get cast out. Hela immediately starts killing people, and Scourge jumps ship, like, like within two seconds. He's like, okay, now I'm on your side. Which makes perfect sense to me. I would do the same thing. You would? Yeah, she's terrifying and hot. You think that's the only reason why... He went over to her side. It's because she's scary. I think he's an opportunist. I mean, he seems like he's very... How did you, how, how would we have gathered that from up until this moment? Because he doesn't pay attention to anything. He's not good at his job. He's playing with a shake weight while Thor's like, hey, get me out of here. Of course. Thor lands on planet garbage where he gets surrounded by baddies until the Valkyrie shows up. Mm-hmm. Valkyrie played by Tessa Thompson gorgeous she based her performance after sarah connor in terminator 2 no shit yep huh the scene where valkyrie falls off the ship is like you trying to stay on your chair (laughs) rude and during practical magic you know like where you're just kind of like holding on she just goes (laughs) okay again that wasn't practical magic that was the one that we did that was legend, and I slipped out because it was very slippery on that super hot in that super hot room at Clear Lake. That was not my fault. That that was a leather seat that was wet, and I was in shorts. There have been several times when you've been holding onto your desk so you don't fall out of your seat. You're holding on your desk now. Valkyrie never calls Thor Thor. Never once in the movie. Nope. She only calls him Your Majesty. Fun fact. How about that? Ain't that some shit? Hela lets the Asgardians know to put up or shut up, and then she kills them all. 
Well, so, I mean, she, what was the point of saying put up or shut up? Because she's just going to kill them all. Well, because they didn't, they didn't shut up or put up. Mm. Yeah. So she gave them two options. And if you don't, if you're given a choice and you don't take either one, it's she's, kind of on you at that point. I say that she's, she's not a very convincing villain. That seems reasonable. She has like, she just goes, and knives come out. And then she starts throwing them at everybody. She's a very convincing villain. Can I tell you that that's who I, what I want for my Halloween costume? To be Hella? Yeah. You should do it. I just can't. I gotta not eat any more butterscotch discs. I want to be Korg. <laughs> <laughs> He's being a dickhead again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to Korg in a little bit. Yeah, we will. So speaking of things that I can't pronounce, Kate Blanchett studied the Af- Afro-Brazilian martial art called Capoeira? Capoeira, yes. Oh, yes. Love that shit. To prepare for this role. It was funny when she's like, she's, when the, when the Asgardians are not, they're not having any of her shit, she's like, I thought you'd be happy to see me. She's like, my father is dead. As are the princes. You're welcome. <laughs> Haughty Heimdall steals the big sword. Do we know what that's called? The Bifrost sword? Yep. Okay, yeah. Well, he steals that because he's so hot and smart. Mm-hmm. This is hard. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, I hate this. So the garbage planet that Thor and Loki land on is called Planet Sakar. I don't want to attack this anymore. Too bad. So during the psychedelic scene where... Thor takes a ride, which introduces him to Planet Sakaar. Yeah. That is, v- the the song that's playing is Pure Imagination. Yes. And that's that scene is very much based on Willy Wonka. Well, yeah. Okay. The song's from Willy Wonka. I know, but the whole scene in general, like the boat, you know, going through the boat, and it's kind of creepy. He's kind of going through the kind of psychedelic thing. I don't know. I didn't see any Oompa Loompas. Not a one. I understand that they could have been in the background and this was a very bright and vibrant place and there was lots of things to look at. So they might have hidden the background or like, you know, like became one of those like, um, like where's Waldo type things where there's so much shit around that you can't quite see them, but they're there. You just got to find them. Kind of spot the Oompas type of thing. But I don't remember seeing any. So I'm going to say no. Not like Willy Wonka. We are all dumber for having heard that. I, I, and may God have mercy on your soul. Where's the lie? This isn't Willy Wonka. You said it was. No, I so, said that he took inspiration from that scene in Willy Wonka. No, you said that this was a remake of Willy Wonka. No, I didn't. I don't think you said that. Okay. This is where Thor meets the Grandmaster, played by Jeff Goldblum, who is perfection and what is the look on your face and what is the problem? He is perfection at playing Jeff Goldblum. What? Jeff Goldblum in this role is playing Jeff Goldblum. And I am 100% positive. As much as I love this movie, and you know I do, that is a fact. He is playing himself. There is nothing outside of Jeff Goldblum. His normal personality that isn't being showcased right here. Other than the movie that for some reason I, I that I cannot understand that you haven't seen, Grand Budapest Hotel, Jeff Goldblum is kind of Jeff Goldblum in most movies, sort of like Christopher Walken is Christopher Walken. Mm-mm. When you have that look, when you have that voice, it's hard for him to not be Jeff Goldblum playing a character. No, I saw him in The Fly, and I don't remember him like regurgitating and eating uh, people in this movie. Maybe it was in a, one of the, you know, deleted scenes. I think he is hysterical. I think he is so funny in this. I think he's funny in general, but that's, that's, he is, he is, because he is so Jeff Goldblum in this, it takes you out of the movie. I don't think it does. I think it suspends your belief. I don't think it does at all. I love that he calls Thor sparkles. (laughs) It's so funny. And it, when, we, when he's playing the synthesizer, <laughs> he's actually an accomplished pianist. 
Oh, I believe that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum is so good at playing Jeff Goldblum. You know what? He can play Jeff Goldblum all day long, and I say, cheers. Really? Yeah. So why are you arguing this point that he's not actually playing Jeff Goldblum? He is definitely playing himself. Casamigos, I just said that with the exception of Grand Budapest Hotel, Mm -mm. Jeff Goldblum plays Jeff Goldblum in every movie. Mm -mm. And I said, no, fly. Thor sees Loki, who is already assimilated because he's a tricky (laughs) bitch. Of course he is. Thor meets Korg, which is one of my favorite. I love Korg so much. He's played by Taika Waititi. Mm Mm-hmm. Where he says that he's there because he tried to start a revolution, but he didn't print enough pamphlets. So no one showed up <laughs> except his mom and boyfriend that he hates. <laughs> so funny. Uh, I think he's a stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I and I love that God. that Quark starts calling Thor New Doug, which is basically whoever gets <laughs> thrown into the pit next. That is just what Doug said. Okay, right. hey, Doug. Korg is basically like, hey, uh, I'm not going to get used to you because you're going to be thrown into this uh, pit and no one survives, basically. Again, this movie is so goddamn silly that anything that could be even remotely seen as meaningful comes off as insincere. I don't think so. Well, I disagree. Okay, well, look you are allowed S- to be wrong. Look at Skirt. He's supposed to have a character redemption arc, and he's nothing more than a plot prop. Well, it's about time that a man is a plot prop, I say. You're a plot prop. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Cut back to Hella, who, by the way, is super pissed that no one knows her story. Yeah. <laughs> she grabs the eternal flame, which is not as cheerful as the Bengals made it out to be. Mm-mm. And brings all the baddies back to life. Yeah. Is that after she took down the ceiling fresco? What's wrong with that? I didn't say anything was wrong with it. Okay. I'm saying that I'm just trying to get some context here. I'm so wrapped up in things being so hilarious that it's hard to remember the things that aren't hilarious. Although, like, her taking down the ceiling fresco reminded me of, like, people, like, removing carpet to see if they can find, like, hardwood floors underneath. She's like, where's my picture? <laughs> This house was built in the 20s. I know there's hardwood floors (laughs) under here. Thor and Loki are chatting, but Loki's not really there. No, no. He's being a sneaky snake. He's being a sneaky snake. And it's another, every scene that Korg is in is so good. Korg runs at Loki and he's like, piss off, ghost. (laughs) (laughs) Kicks the wall. Kicks the wall. Korg is helping Thor pick out a weapon. I really wish I had my hammer. Hammer? Quite unique. It was made from this, this special metal from the heart of the dying star. Every time I threw it, it would always come back to me. It sounds like you had a pretty special and intimate relationship with this hammer, and that losing it was almost comparable to losing a loved one. It's a nice way of putting it. Thor's hair gets cut for the battle scene, which is a nod to Roman gladiators. And somehow he's even hotter than he was before. Um, I disagree. Oh, Stan Lee, though. Like, oh, this was his last movie, right? Was this his last? Uh huh. All I know is it made me sad. And yeah. Fuck this movie for making me sad. Yeah, but, Th- but Thor looked hot with that haircut. Why did they need to cut his hair? That's because that's dumb. what they would do to Roman gladiators. Well, it's dumb. And I don't like it. Okay. Thor sees the person he's supposed to fight is Hulk and he is pumped. He's like, we're friends. We work together. <laughs> jokes 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 thor thinks this is gonna be easy and uh hulk clearly can't remember who he is thor tries to soothe hulk like black widow does like the sun's going down buddy and hulk's having none of it again i say that this uh hulk fight cgi looks for goddamn ridiculous i think it's insulting what i do also this movie is very long this movie, for a Marvel movie, this movie's like a short story. No, we're already two hours in. Your face. You get, you you think that Thor is going to take down Hulk because yeah. he's figured out his whole Thunder thing again. But Hulk kicks his ass. Yes, he does. Cue to the next scene. Get your hand away from, why are you just hovering over the red button like you're one of the alien spaceships in independence day you you mean that will smith couldn't see even though he wanted to be an astronaut the next scene thor doesn't have a shirt on 
remember. And this seems like a perfect time to mention huh. that he gained 20 pounds of muscle <sighs> for this movie. He worked out six to seven times a week. He was on a plant-based diet. He, I mean... He used to know. shake weight. Then Thor mind melds with Hottie Heimdall and finds that Hela is fucking shit up. Hulk and Thor have another funny scene where they act like little men children, but Thor talks Hulk into helping him convince Valkyrie to help, and she wants no part of fucking with Hela. Mm-mm. 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 Which is smart. Thor takes off to find Hulk's ship and eventually figures out that the password is point break. <laughs> Just, which, Strongest Avenger. Right, right. And this is what Iron Man called Thor in the first Avenger movie, was Point Break. Oh, that's right. Uh-huh. I like that, that Bruce Banner is like, <laughs> Banner, he goes, Strongest Avenger. I'm in a glass case of an No, ocean. no, you no, said, that's just saying that's you what said, happened in it. No, you said I no, liked. I didn't. You said I liked that Hulk's name is strongest avenger no what do you have to what what do you like that's not in my notes what do you like about the remake of clash of the titans fuck nothing god damn it i feel like i've had to do way more of these well get better get worse it only had one sequel okay i'll take it because that movie does suck oh god damn it i'm already through my wine you're not even halfway. That's why this is hard. Hulk turns back into Banner, and he's more neurotic than me, which is pretty impressive. It is. That's that's true. He is more neurotic than you are. Valkyrie decides to help out, and she's like, "They're like, what are we going to be called?" And and Thor's like, "The Revengers." Is that what he says? Uh huh. Because like, Valkyrie's getting revenge against Hela. Oh, Thor's yeah. getting revenge against. Is this where the Valkyrie has like the flashback thanks to Loki? Where is that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. What's wrong with that? Uh, nothing. It's just that I I thought that... I better word this one carefully. The Valkyrie flashback is very stylized and... Cool. And some may say well-made. Incredibly. So why couldn't more of the movie have looked like that? Because the movie can't be five hours long. No, I'm not saying it had to be extra. I'm saying that rather than the bright, vibrant colors that seem to be apparent in every single scene, especially in... Planet Garbage? Yeah, Planet Garbage. There's It's a lot, a lot. But even like with Hela and like back in uh, Asgard, I mean, there's, there's lots and lots and lots of bright, vibrant colors. But the Valkyrie scene doesn't look like that it's 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 like i said it's really stylized and looks like an old you know painting i'm not gonna push the button even though i know you're talking about how great the scene is i disagree about asgard i don't think it's bright especially when hell is there like it's dark you was wrong and gloomy now planet garbage is like over the top but i think it's supposed to be over the top not even just that the valkyrie scene is very like it, it looks like it came out of a painting it like it looks like it came straight out of a painting why couldn't more of the movie have done that because i think that scene was supposed to have a different vibe than the rest of the movie i mean you're you're learning why she is the way she is like Mm -hmm. why this really strong person Mm -hmm. spends her whole time drunk on planet garbage Mm. planet garbage that's what i call my badge (laughs) (laughs) i call mine (laughs) suckar it's fucking horrible (laughs) and not true planet awesome (laughs) mark ruffalo was instagram living the premiere and accidentally left uh, it on and filmed the first 10 minutes of the movie. <gasps> oh, no. Which I guess, like, he and uh, the guy who plays Spider-Man now. Oh, was, Tom Holland? Yeah. They're notorious for, like, spoiling things. Oh. Mm-hmm. Loki talks Thor into letting him help, but, of course, he tries to backstab Thor. So Thor tases him and goes to save Asgard. Is this where she's like... He doesn't want to hear the word slaves. He says, she's like, prisoners with jobs. Right. (laughs) Really? I know. You know. 
It, where's the devil's anus? <laughs> I've got it right here. Okay. Hulk says, guys, we're coming up on devil's anus. Thor is back on As- Asgard, and he sits on the throne to piss hell off, which is hysterical. <laughs> yeah. And Thor is talking about ruling, and he's like, it can't be you. You're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> is that funny? <laughs> yes, it was funny. I'm in a glass case of emotion. It's worth it. I fucking love this movie. I'm just, that's all going in one. I've already got a button push. Um, okay. Here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Ray Fiennes is in this, is in that, and so is Liam Neeson. And they were both in Schindler's List and that won an Oscar. Okay, I'll we'll take it. Oh, thank God. Hottie Heimdall leads the people to the Bifrost <laughs> while Thor and Hela fight it out. And she seems way better at this than Thor is. Yeah, I don't... Actually, that's so funny you say that because that's in my notes. I'm sorry. Why is Hela so much stronger than Thor again? They're both gods. They're both children of Odin. She got... Like, why? But I the, I think... The power of the puss? Yes. But also, she's like the goddess of killing. Like, this is, this is her kink. Thor isn't into, like, killing people. He's lightning. I know, but it's, it's more like lightning to, you know, if there's a power outage. Nah. To help people. Look, I am, as we know, I'm hmm? terrified of lightnings. So I'm way more scared of Thor than I am the goddess of death. That's just my own shit I need to work out. Right. She, it's in her name, death. Sure. But that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't insinuate that she's better at fighting. Just because she's the goddess of death doesn't mean she's, like, I don't assume that Hades is stronger than Poseidon. I don't think Hades is stronger than Zeus because he rules the underworld. I just think that that's a different... I don't think she's stronger than Thor. She's better at it. No, she seems way stronger. He She crushes meow, meow. in the Oscar-winning movie Over the Top. Uh, uh, there were several times when Sylvester Stallone... Was not stronger than the people that he beat. He beat in the arm wrestling competition. He hadn't turned his hat around yet. I know, but he, but he's into it more. He needed it. He wanted it. It's basically the same thing as Hella. He wanted that semi truck. Yeah, of course. It's a badass truck, huh? Yeah, it's the same thing. They're basically the same movie. Ah, uh, oopsie doodle. She cuts his eye out, but thank God he's still hot. Yeah, she does. Rude. Rude. <laughs> Rude. Hulk tries to take out the big-ass dog that's on the little rainbow walkway. It's a wolf. Oh, wolf. Okay. Which I think that that wolf, Fenrir, I think that in myth, I think in Norse mythology, I think that that is actually Loki's child. One of Loki's children. I think that that might be right, but I'm, I'm not gonna, 100%. It's I'm, been a while since I've read. It's been a while since I've read any oh Norse mythology. So the Hulk takes out the big ass wolf, we think. But uh, Rainbow Bridge is getting all sorts of fucked up. Loki decides to do something right and helps get people off of Asgard. Well, so does Scourge. And so does Scourge, yes. Yeah, there's that character arc that he had apparently had. Thor goes on a little mind trip to get some advice from Odin. Yeah, he does the uh, Asgard's people not a place. Right. Message. Yeah, yeah Asgard's a yeah, Asgard is about the people, it's not a place. So but, oh, what are you rolling your eyes for? It's like some hippie shit. Okay, but what he really said was, "Hey dumbass, quit being a little bitch and be a hot one instead with your thunder." That's what he said. Yes, that's what he said. That's what you got from it's a it's a place. It's a it's yeah. people not a place. Yeah, he's like, quit being a little bitch. You're fine as hell, and you have thunder hands. <laughs> Grab some thunder and find that fucking dog. <laughs> you one-eyed little bitch. <laughs> I only got one eye. Valkyrie comes out of the plane, out of the spaceship, and she looks fine as hell, and she's got swagger. You know what scene I'm talking about. Like the hair is flowing, her cape's flowing. I don't recall. Oh, man. I, maybe they were playing Immigrant Song for the 800th time. They weren't. They played it two times. At least. They played it twice in this movie. Constantly. I am as certain about that as I am that Bill Paxton and Bill Pullman are the same person. So you're not sure at all? So 100% I'm positive. times. I'm 100% this. positive 
It play, was played twice. I get it. Immigrant songs are great songs. It is. I just just admit that they're playing it a thousand times. 857 times. Thor realizes to kill Hela, they have to destroy Asgard. Scourge gets his two guns, which I will remind you are called Dez and Troy, because <laughs> when you put them together, it's destroy. <laughs> is that funny? No. To distract Hela, and she takes him out, which is kind of sad. I guess. Surtur is alive and destroys Asgard with Hela on it. What's wrong with that? No, I just, I, I think it's, Asgard can just relocate. Like, they can just pull up, like, all, all the people out of it can just relocate. If that's the case, the, like, they always could? Yeah, but why would they? That place was bitching. It had a rainbow walkway. They could probably find a rainbow walkway anywhere. Well, there's there's going... a whole, like, colorful trash planet that's, that's you know, just around the corner. I'm saying, if, if, this, if this was always, like, we could relocate, that's always an option, then why is Ragnarok so bad? Because they're going to lose their sweet real estate? Yeah, that place looks bitching. Well, sure, but there are other places in the universe. Well, and they go is... find it. Yeah, I mean, but if, if you're on a bitchin' planet, and you, what's the point of moving unless, you know, uh, the goddess of death comes in and fucks things up? Yeah, but when they're talking about Ragnarok, they're, they're not talking about, like, y'all might have to move. It's going to be sad. You don't want that. It, they're saying, no, Ragnarok is the end-all, be-all, like, y'all no longer. No, y- you're no longer <laughs> You're no Ragnarok. longer. Hmm. But that's not the case, because it's people, not place. That was nonsense that you just said. Did any of it? No. Was it like a coherent sentence? No. Thor's bummed because Asgard's no more. Hottie Heimdall's reminding him that you just saved a shit ton of people. And it's a people, not place. That's right. So they're going to Earth. And the movie's over. Okay, I have in my notes. Mm-hmm. This is Marvel. Don't forget post-credits, Anna. Dot, 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 Katrina's a liar. <laughs> oh, I actually forgot the post-credits. 100%. I have no, I... Katrina's a, dot, 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 Katrina's a liar. I have nothing, no. The only other thing I didn't say is that Taika Waititi said that, um, that they improvised 80% of the film, or at least ad-libbed a ton. This is the end of the movie? Yes, it's the end of the movie. I was, just, yes. If we hear... Sean Astin. Sam... <laughs> Sam Wise Gimji here in a second. Yeah. That's gonna be there's not gonna be any button pushes after Correct. That? It's done. Yes. It's over now. Oh, I hated attacking this. It but you I know I hated it. When I read that though, the that eighty percent of the movie was yeah. improviser ad libbed, it made me think of like the screenwriter who's like, hey, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I really I had to watch this twice because I could I didn't have I had Fuck all for notes. I had to watch Black Dynamite five times. Oh my god, this was really tough. I st- I <laughs> I understand the criticism that the humor in this movie can be a distraction. I, do, I don't personally agree with it. I I agree with what you're saying. Yeah, I I I, I understand why why people would feel that way. I, I 100% do. I just, I love a funny movie that's supposed to be serious or a serious, you know, whenever. I like when uh, comedians do dramatic work. Like, I really like that crossover mm-hmm. type stuff. And I just, this movie is just so much fun to watch. <laughs> it's just such a blast. But I do get it. We don't want to hear your, about your favorite Marvel movie. We don't want to hear about your favorite action movie. We'd like someone to tell us why Taika Waititi is so hot. <laughs> Yeah. Get a hold of us and let us know. We absolutely love hearing from you all. I swear we do. It's absolutely true. There's nothing that we love more because we have tremendous egos. (laughs) (laughs) We don't. I do. But you don't. (laughs) I do, though. We are at Split Happens Pod on all of the socials and splithappenspod.com. Anything else that you want to talk about? Oh, We've got some changes coming up, people. It's very exciting. Please stay tuned. Well, I'm going to go drink some more and forget that I had to trash this beautiful movie. Mm. All right, bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.